Everything in my life happened on the heels of rejection. I'm really good at rejection. I read you failed at 22 jobs. Yes, I did. Well, I didn't fail. I tried 22 jobs. I was fired from only four. What do you say to people who have gone through that in their own lives? My best advice is to take the power into your own hands and move yourself on. I think everybody knows when they're in the wrong spot, and sometimes it takes somebody to fire you to move you on. Nobody likes to be called in and fired and very often not even told exactly why. I'm still wanting to get in touch with my bosses who fired me <laughs> and say, exactly, why did you let me go? They haven't quite reached out to you? Uh, no, I haven't heard from any of them, actually. What? <laughs> you would think, I bet they're watching Shark Tank all They're the too time. embarrassed <laughs> to reach out. And besides which, they were all older than me. All of my jobs ended when I was 23, so all those bosses, I got even the dead. <laughs> <laughs> now you have built a multi-billion dollar business. Yes. You're in the seventh season of Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? How did you make it all come together? I think I had something to prove. I think I was a dumb kid in school and was tired of being made fun of. And I think I came out into the work world proving everybody that I wasn't dumb, that I could make a success of myself. An insult in life. It gets you going. There's great motivation. Eventually I found a spot that fit me well and fit my personality well. Real estate. Real estate and then Shark Tank. I invested in businesses no different than choosing salespeople in a real estate company and motivating them. It's exactly what I do on Shark Tank. I choose entrepreneurs and motivate them doing the same old stuff. You took a thousand dollar loan mm -hmm. and turned it into the Corcoran Group. Yes, I did. What were the things along the way you did that helped that company grow that turned it into what it is? I think the most important thing is I picked good people. And I know that sounds trite. Who doesn't want good people? But I think I always had a very, uh, very good sense of who was a winner and who was a loser, who would try hard, who wouldn't. So I think my only gift really is I'm very good at sizing up people. When you really give people a fair shake and you support them in every way you can, they rise to the top. Do you like to hire on the younger side so you can train and develop people? I like to hire attitude. You really need the, both the work ethic and the attitude. Put those together, you've got a winner that you could do something with. and. It's a lot more fun working with people like that. Better energy, more excitement, and you can dream together. I want to talk to you about Shark Tank. I have hired men, women my whole life. When I get a woman who's crying, I refile her in my head in terms of potential. Now in its seventh season. Yes, it and is. And you were telling me in the beginning, mm -hmm. it might have looked like it wasn't going to continue. First of all, when I was asked to be on Shark Tank, I said yes immediately didn't read the contract and signed it and sent it back. And then three days before I was going to Shark Tank, I got a call from the production company, Mark Burnett Productions, saying they had decided on another woman. There was one female There was seat, another person. And they used me as a fallback. But I wrote the best email of my life to Mark, telling him that I considered his rejection a lucky charm and everything in my life happened on the heels of rejection. I'm really good at rejection. And I think he should invite both women out to compete for the seat. And that's exactly what he did. Now we got into Shark Tank. Every one of the sharks knew it was going to be a hit show. Well, we felt it in our gut. And the reason we felt that is because the camera guys were so involved in the show, they couldn't ask enough questions discussing what we should have bought, what we didn't buy. However, we were told constantly the show was going to be canceled. We constantly got the email, sorry, this looks like it's going to be, it's going to be canceled, but we never got the email that it was canceled. You never know how these things work. You hope for a little bit of luck, yes? Absolutely. What's the investment that still keeps you up at night? There's really only one that I remember that I felt sad about, and it was uh, an app that was developed by two kids in college. Our company is Note Hall, and we're here asking for $90,000 in exchange for 10% of our company. Note Hall is a website that allows college students to buy and sell class notes and study guides in each of their college courses. One kid was smart, one kid was dumb. The smart kid, with the blessing of the college, was able to sell their notes from the class to the dumb kid. And it was endorsed by close to 50 colleges when they were on Shark Tank. I thought, I was a dumb kid. I would have bought those notes and I was in. Barbara Steele? Let's make millions. Let's do this. Yeah. I love these guys. <laughs> So I invested $100,000 for 30% of their business, but something about those kids gave me a chill up my spine. And before they left the set, I said, you're not gonna shop this deal around, are you? If you say you're in and I say I'm in, we got a deal, oh, trust us. 
Now, I had learned in business when people say, oh, trust us, they're usually not trustworthy. <laughs> and so they walked away from the deal, shot the deal, got paid $10 million, and I was left with an empty contract. That was the one that got away, season wow. two. Yeah. After season that, two. when they got away, next, we have so many businesses on Shark Tank. I don't worry about that anymore. So, like, oh, we'll get a better one. Here he comes. <laughs> what goes through your mind as people are coming out? I simply watch the entrepreneur as they walk into the set because the show doesn't tell them that they're going to be made to wait for five minutes before they can speak up. They say, you ready for the pitch? Get in there, but don't talk till somebody talks to you. Then they get in, they're pumped up. They want to pitch it, looking at the sharks, making great eye contact, acting really cocky. And then little by little, you see them unwind because no one's told them to talk. And it's done intentionally. And I just watch how they handle that pressure. Because one thing I know is if I'm going to get in bed with a great entrepreneur, he better be good under pressure. Because if he or she falls under pressure, they're never going to build a business. Because building a business is nothing more than thinking of creative ways and having the chutzpah to get over obstacles. And if you're going to sit around and moan and groan, you're not going to build a business. I am out within the first minute on that set with any entrepreneur, or I'm very interested based on their physical reaction to that pressure. What do you do when you're under that kind of pressure? Uh, you mean if I'm afraid and I think I'm not performing well, or I'm going through insecurity, or I think I'm Alice falling down that little rabbit hole, help me, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. Happens all the time whenever I'm put in a situation where I'm scared to death, including Shark Tank. I wasn't comfortable on that show for almost three years. Scared. Three years? Absolutely, and even sometimes still I get rattle. But what do I do? I do the same old thing. I pump myself up. I start that little reel in my head that says, oh yeah, I'm just as much right to be here. Okay, this isn't a boys club. This isn't a girls club. I have a right to be here. I have just as much right to be rich like you. I have as much success as you. I start fooling myself and just get that tape, get that tape. And then I finally think, what would a man do? And I do it. <laughs> <laughs> what I would raise a man my do? hand. I demand what I want. I say what I think. I tell this guy to shut up and I get the floor. And you wanna know something that's most of it, just taking the space for yourself and thinking you're gonna get it. What do you do when people come back and say, what are you talking about, Barbara? No. Here's the thing, I think most of business is sales. If you can't sell, you're not gonna stay in business. If you're a good salesman, you think on your feet and you could envision what the other person wants to hear. And after that, most people are bought in. And if they like you, you can get away with murder. I don't, <laughs> but if people like you, you could give much less in that situation and get your way. Funny enough about people is they're all smarter than we all think they are. People can sense when they can trust you. People can sense when you're giving them a line of baloney and you're not yeah. going to deliver. Generally, if you're yourself and you're a decent person, people are going to buy in. And uh, that's a powerful card in a world that teaches you to have proper etiquette, be a certain, certain way, dress a certain way, have a certain education. I think it's terribly refreshing for people to feel like they're seeing a real person. A real deal, I'll take you, okay? Uh, because there's a lot of pretense in life. Yeah. People are so accustomed to seeing the inauthentic. And it gets old and it gets boring. I hear from people all the time, they have a great idea. Mm -hmm. They're working so hard. Mm. For some reason, they're just not getting it over the mm. goal line. To that person who thinks, I'm not good at sales, mm -hmm. what's your advice? If you're level-headed enough to see yourself for who you are and then really, uh, Admit honestly to yourself where you want to go and what part you're missing. You can always find the part. You can't replace desire if it's not there, but you could always find the part to make yourself hit the point you're shooting for. Uh, most people are not good at sales, right? That's a certain gift. The ability to sell an idea uh, is uh, exactly uh, the ability to inspire. You made a very valid point about, well, if you don't really want it, mm. ask yourself that question. Do I really want this? Am I really willing to give mm. what it takes to get there? You know, Rebecca, what I find most interesting is every entrepreneur, when they start their business, is in love with the idea. They're fully passionate, and they have every intention of doing it until they drop. But here's what goes awry. Once they get into it, uh, the passion wanes the minute they hit their first obstacle. The minute someone offends them, tells them the idea is worthless, shushes them to the side, doesn't show them any respect. The minute an entrepreneur hires somebody and the person's a turncoat and goes working for someone else and takes the secrets with them, what happens is they suddenly have an excuse to feel sorry for themselves. And I can tell you that is the one trait that every successful entrepreneur does not have. 
they don't take the time to feel sorry for themselves. You've they, never ever felt sorry for yourself. I do, yeah, of course. I felt sorry for myself when I was re rejected from Shark Tank. I'm like, oh, 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 and the minute I started thinking, oh, poor me, very quickly, I turned it into, oh, Action. yeah? Action, let me stand up for myself. That's not a special trait I have. It's a trait that is common to every successful entrepreneur, without exception. In my office, I have all the businesses I invested in on my wall. Beautiful frame, matted pictures of every entrepreneur I've invested money in from season one. And I think they total 38 to date. And the minute something happens where I see them feeling sorry for themselves, I go right over my wall and hang them upside down to remind myself never to spend another real minute of my life worrying about them again, because they never going to make it. It's a very efficient system. They're calling, they're emailing, who do I put first on that long list of people that need attention? All my people that are still right side up, they're winners. <laughs> they haven't felt sorry. So it How is a poisonous thing. How many people are turned thing. over on that wall? I probably have uh, one third of a everyone. A third of the wall. A third, roughly a third of the wall. All, all still smiling, but they're upside down. <laughs> Three out of four employed Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Zebit is designed to provide no-cost credit to 68 million underserved Americans. Zebit is a very interesting company. It's a solution for employers to help their employees manage their own personal finances and also tremendously high interest rates on their credit cards. They give a line, it's kind of like a credit line, it's called a Zebit line. You use that for major purchases so you don't have an expensive credit card that has high interest rate. There's no interest rate and so employers are very excited about bringing it on because the employees love it and it doesn't cost anything. So this is one of your endorsements. Yes, it is. And it's something that you care a lot about because it helps people with financial freedom. It allows people not to feel financial stress day in and day out in the workplace. And people really can't succeed, get ahead, or even do a good job if they're worried about their bills and escalating credit card charges and multiplying out on their interest rate. It just makes no sense. So I like anything that resolves that. And Zebit does a good job at that. Okay, um, I want to do some real biz rapid fire with you. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what it is, but okay. Good. Let me have a little of this water first. That was There's delicious. no water. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How much sleep do you get? It varies. You know, eight hours to five hours, depending on the on the night. Your biggest splurge? Flowers. I probably spend more on flowers than most women spend on shoes. Complete this sentence. You should never waste your money on a friend that drags your energy down. Nothing's going to come out of it. Your biggest money fail. Investing 800000 in a stupid homes on tape idea. <laughs> uh, put all the homes on videotape for the Corcoran Group. It failed miserably. But on the heels of that, I discovered the internet four years before my competitors and made a fortune. <laughs> the thing you're most proud of. Of course, my children, my son Tommy and my daughter. Kate, um, what I'm most proud of is uh, my parents. Remarkable, remarkable people that loved us to death on a shoestring budget and raised 10 kids and made us each successful. I don't know how you do that. I hope to hit that batting average with two. Who's the most high maintenance shark? Robert. <laughs> Robert? My gosh. You know, we have to come to the Shark Tank set with one outfit. Robert brings 50. 50. And then he parades in and out of my trailer. You like these cuffs? You like this collar? What do you think about the lavender? You like that tie? Robert, just get on your goddamn suit and get on the set. <laughs> I'm Barbara Corcoran, and you're watching Real Biz with Rebecca Jarvis. One more time, just a little bit higher. Thank you so much. Okay. Phone? Yeah, there's a show. It's everyone's phones are. Thanks, guys. I have a purse and my, my ringer might be on if you want to check that. I have your purse downstairs. Oh, it's upstairs. Okay. Why do I even care that we won't Somebody hear is stealing yeah. all of your belongings right now. <laughs> That's all it's in there. <laughs> Straighten my back? Yeah, what a pain in the ass. You swear he's my jingle, or whatever they call it. Jingle? <laughs> <laughs> this is for the outtakes. Part. Okay, okay. <laughs> Perfect. What are you dreaming of these days? I'm dreaming about. Um, <laughs> No, I can't answer that. I was going to give you a joke, but no, I'd hear about it from my 21-year-old. Says you can't say that on the air. Well, yeah. Live? Are you ready yeah, I need yeah. a few more minutes. Just okay. a few more minutes. Um, Pushy broad. 